Welcome back. We're discussing the Ukrainian-Russia conflict and what's happening on the ground. And joining me again is Pavlo Lozinski, who's a Canadian, but of Ukrainian descent, born in Ukraine, and he's also a missionary and pastor. Pavlo, could you explain to us, how did you end up in Ukraine? I know we hear so many, uh, you know, diaspora Ukrainians who are going back to fight or going back to help refugees escape or going to help out with humanitarian missions. Uh, did you come when you heard that this this war was going to break out or how long have you been in Ukraine now? Uh, no, I've actually been here for a while, since 2005. So yeah, I grew up in Ukraine, then our whole family immigrated to Canada. Uh, but in my, like when I was 25, roughly, I just felt that I need to come back and make a difference here to work really to help to build a good country. And uh, uh, yeah, I've been pastoring a church here and doing a lot, lot of lots of social work. Uh, but right now, everything is under attack. Uh, right now, everything we've been building is Russia, Russia is trying to destroy, unfortunately. So I'm a missionary with One Mission Society. And I was originally in Canada. I lived in, in St. Catharines, Niagara. And um, here right now, everything changes. We had some plans. We were working on something. and But Today, we, we understand that, first of all, we need to save people's lives and we may lose everything. But in the same time, uh, people are very determined to fight, uh, very determined to not give up. And I actually think we do have a strong chances of protecting that. But everyone, everybody needs to do their part. And for our viewers information, I mean, Ukraine is a very large populous country. It's more populated than Canada, obviously not. It's not as geographically large, but it is about 45 million people. Uh, so, yes, yeah, so far, about one and a half million uh, Ukrainians have <clears throat> fled. You said in your area of Lviv, it hasn't been hit yet because you're far west. How mm -hmm. is there a hope that, you know, within the coming days, that there will be more men who are fleeing, taking up arms and, and defending the country and further pushing back. We know we've heard reports that the Russian uh, army has suffered casualties, have suffered huge casualties. A lot of their mm -hmm. equipment has been destroyed. Is this yeah. fueling more to stay and fight or are people still wanting to, to get out of the do to get out of, of, of a war zone? Uh, basically, the, the, those who get out, just women and kids, we want our families to be protected. But men are ready to fight. And even some women volunteering coming back to that. This is our land. This is our nation. All There's no reason whatsoever. Everything that Putin said is completely fake. It's actually, he's like looking in a mirror. Like the things he's talking about, Nazis and something like this, that's more about Russians because they cannot stand another free country next to them. And they want to destroy it. But yeah, we are very determined to fight and protect. Unfortunately, they're destroying everything. And we would need a lot of energy and finances to rebuild. But we're definitely not giving up. And uh, like I said, no direct fighting in the West here, even though they've been shooting with rockets. So there's some damage here as well. But wow. a lot of volunteers, a lot of men are ready and like territory defense. It's like kind of in addition to army, like a national guards of sorts. Right. It's like there's way more people wanting to join it that there is arms. So Ukraine has more people ready to fight that we have arms. That's why we've been wow. asking for help. One thing we really lack then is that we don't have a, a good aviation or good uh, like to protect our skies. That's why I've been asking for that because basically they just bombing us everything like they they don't care. What is it like schools? It's like I forgot today was a number like hundreds of hospitals schools were just destroyed they don't care what to oh shoot oh my at. goodness unfortunately so when you're so, when you're receiving these refugees that come out of these bombed out cities mm -hmm. what are what kind of practical things are you setting up i assume food supplies is the red cross helping yeah. out as well the un so first of all there's just room for us so we set up like personally our church did we set up two shelters in each like 25 people can sleep so there's just mattresses on the floor we're providing food for them clothing who needs anything they need and we also help to women and, and kids we drive them to the border so they can cross uh, into the safety uh, other churches in the area are doing that uh, all the schools in the area were turned into some kind of uh, shelters like that but the need is just gigantic a lot of people have to stay in a um, uh, train station and and there because there's no place to for them to sleep so if Canadians want to help out, if, if mm -hmm. you know, hearing your, your testimony, your firsthand experience, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's shocking because this is 2022. And I suppose a lot of us don't think that we could be in a humanitarian crisis like this again. What should people do here in Canada if they want to help? 
Uh, well, um, you can pray for us. You can help financially. You can Google. There's multiple ways. You can Google uh, my name and the One Mission Society Canada, Pablo Lozinski. There is a fund set up with One Mission for Ukraine relief. Uh, and uh, there's other things. But we practically need it. And ask your government to close the sky for us. Okay, Pablo, thank you so much for joining us today. Stay well. Thank you. 